Hey, everybody. Can you guys hear me? Hello. Yes. Hello. So this is uh, Sam filling in for Sharif. Sharif's running a bit late, so uh, I'm going to kick off the meeting and then he, uh, he should join in a little bit later. But I guess we'll give it a few minutes to see who else can join. Hi everyone. Hey Alex, how are you? Hello. Hey everyone. Hello hey. Igor. Eric, is that a green screen of some boxes in the back? Do we still put our, our producer name after our name? Or is that a thing of the past? I think it'd be useful. I guess it would be useful, yeah. Sure. But I've hijacked Sharif's account. I don't know how I changed it. It's been so long since I've used you. Isn't that Sam over there? It is, yeah, yeah. So I was, so I was ah. just before you joined, sorry. Yeah. Sharif is running late, so I started everything from uh, his account. I'm an imposter today. <laughs> New office, Eric? No, just still under construction. Oh. My builders are the slowest builders in the world, I think. <laughs> So, Philip Hamnet, with whom are you? He was 42. All right, okay. I'm trying to act my name now. Good old days. Um, I almost missed the Zoom meetings. <laughs> hey, yo. Hey, Mini. What's up? Hey, Philip. Hey, Mini. Hey, hey. So I guess we'll, we'll wait another one or two minutes to uh, see if anyone else is going to join. I've posted the agenda uh, into the chat. There was an additional item that, that came in um, raised by Kevin Wilcox, where again, we're seeing um, CPU issues that the CPU emergency um, account isn't able to fix. Bank of State is already saturated, um, but Igor has a fix, so we can touch on that at the end. <laughs> So has Mike joined yet, Michael Yates from EL Stack? Because he is the first point. So either we wait for him or skip to number two. Morning, everybody. Hey, Kevin. Hey, Guillaume. Hi, uh, Alex. I haven't seen your shining face in a while. And still your hide your own. Hello, everyone. Hey. Hey, Roman. Roman. Hey. We got hey, your team. Hello. How's it going over there, Igor? Great, great. Nice to see everyone again. 
We'll probably see you going to San Francisco next week. I don't think I'm going to go personally. Okay. You guys going? Who's going over there? Uh, me and Dami and Thiago. I'll be there as well. See y'all there. We got no videos on that coming. Oh, guys. Oh, Bodan's in the data center. So, do we think this is it? Should we get cracking? So, we don't have a Michael Yates. <laughs> To address point number one, we appear to not have a Ben Sigman to address point number two. Who is number three? Guillermo. This is Guillermo, yes, Titan. He's here. You're muted. Guillaume. You're muted. Guillaume. Guillaume. <laughs> I thought the space bar thing was, uh, okay, good, nice, perfect. So, uh, yeah, like, um, uh, you guys want me to start? Yeah, please, uh, until uh, we get Mike or Ben, um, you can crack on. Okay, perfect. So, um, uh, I guess, like, I was asked to uh, provide an update on uh, uh, CPU situation in general and uh, different things that happened with the EOS Mechanics Initiative over the last uh, couple of weeks, or basically since it started, I guess. Uh, so it's a good thing because I have a lot of things to say. <laughs> so, uh, so as some of you or most of you may know, uh, we started um, the Yes uh, Mechanics Initiative about two months ago with uh, Aloha and uh, Team Gramas. Uh, this is basically like a uh, collaborative effort to uh, help to kind of push the limits of uh, high performance computing and uh, ESIO based. Uh, like block production and full node operation. So uh, what we've been trying to do is to, uh, first of all, like to create a benchmark, like a reference point to uh, establish performance over time and verify uh, how different um, configuration settings or different hardware, different software uh, experimentations perform uh, and always have a baseline to kind of uh, refer to. So uh, since we started the, uh, the Yes Mechanics Initiative, uh, Block One has been very, uh, very helpful. They started using it as well internally to do their own testing. Uh, they've been sharing a lot of information on the Yes Mechanics public channel. So you guys, uh, if you're not on the channel, like I, I suggest you join. Uh, very good discussions happening there all the time. Um, recently, there was uh, uh, we um, uh, we proposed with uh, like Yes Rio proposed a uh, like a, a tweak to the compressor. Uh, uh, like algorithm that basically like regulates the, the, the cost of CPU. Uh, we essentially um, like tested this on CryptoKillin and then implement that on, uh, on mainnet. Uh, we increased the target uh, size of the blocks to 20% uh, from 10% previously, which essentially is um, uh, like reducing the cost of CPU usage and uh, allowing for more transactions to go through. True. So, like these days, we've been uh, like the, the network has been has been like operating like full steam, pretty much. Like we've uh, broken a lot of records in terms of number of actions per second and numbers of uh, like uh, the size of the the computing volume that is happening. So uh, it does it does come at a cost. We have to be uh, careful about these kind of uh, increases because, as, as some of you have, have noticed, it becomes slower and harder to sync or to replay the blockchain if you have um, slower hardware. So uh, I, I, I would advise uh, kind of like being very measured and in future increases to, uh, to the, the, the throughput of the network just to make sure that we can easily replay and like we don't run into this kind of, uh, of issue like uh, more than it already is because this chain is growing pretty fast right now. So uh, we have to be mindful. Uh, we do have a lot of interesting uh, things that are happening uh, on the block one size as well as uh, other imp uh, improvement and the optimizations path that we found and uh, that we were testing, exploring. Um, a number of them are, uh, are already available right now. They just need to be tested. Some of them have been uh, announced and uh, discussed and maybe a bit more like 
like medium term type of thing, but it's uh, still very, very interesting. Uh, amongst the interesting things that are happening right now, like uh, with um, ESIO uh, 1.4, uh, there are a number of improvements that have been uh, made uh, available. Uh, same thing with ESIO CDT for uh, writing smart contracts. Now it's, it's using CLang 7 uh, to, uh, to basically like as a, the front end for the compiling, which uh, allows for a pretty pretty decent improvement um, in uh, in the, the execution time of the of contracts we've uh, we compiled so far. So that's a kind of a low hanging fruit. We can uh, essentially look at recompiling system contracts using this new ESIO CDT, and generally it's around like 20% improvement, uh, like in uh, in terms of uh, execution speed, just by recompiling them. Uh, we have to be careful, obviously, because these things are like uh, need to test thoroughly and make sure that uh, it doesn't uh, introduce any side effects. But uh, we started doing that, like some books we showed on the crypto kill and started testing recompiling system contracts. There looks great so far. Uh, I think uh, I think uh, Lao Mao was uh, was uh, heading that effort. So like keep going, guys. <laughs> it's uh, it's uh, it's very good uh, testing to uh, to improve this. Uh, other improvements that have been made available. Uh, include recompiling ESIO with uh, compiling ESIO with uh, March native optimizations. Few percentage point, not that impressive, but still like you'll probably gain like two, three uh, percent like uh, execution speed if you recompile with March native at least on the CPUs that have been tested. I think uh, Rio was. Rio was. Uh, let's, try, let's try this one. Uh, Igor, do you know like uh, how much improvement was that? Like a few percentage point, I think. We have five to seven percent, but not not that big. Still, still interesting. Yeah. So uh, yeah, like so that's uh, that's uh, uh, for now. Now, obviously, we have other things that are coming up. Like block one uh, was um, essentially describing a few other optimization paths that they're uh, like contemplating or working on. Uh, that includes ahead of time compiling uh, of, of of contracts. Right now, we're uh, like uh, Webit. And uh, binary and like binary is getting deprecated, but uh, Webbit is also an, an interpreter. So there is another uh, potential gain to be uh, to be achieved if we compile uh, ahead of time using something similar to WaveM, but not WaveM it seems because like uh, WaveM takes too much time uh, on the set code operation and like uh, it could could basically like hang the network for uh, like while it's happening. So it's not necessarily like a good solution. However, like if it's sandboxed and kind of Move separately from the main processing thread. It may actually be uh, be a, an interesting uh, path forward because once it's compiled, like the wave M stuff is extremely fast. Like with uh, with like um, maybe like twice as fast as Webit or something. So maybe even more than that. So it's uh, definitely an interesting path to uh, to explore. And they are doing other things like uh, they're refactoring the chain index, uh, like the multi index of uh, the chain base. Um, uh, which is also going to yield some additional, like purely software-driven improvements. Uh, they're also adding uh, multi-threading for uh, signature validations. So that's also like uh, going to be uh, going to be improving uh, replay times and uh, like even up to a point like real-time performance. So that's all very very uh, interesting stuff. However, like it's it's still important to kind of uh, like realize that the preferred method to scaling EOS is really like IBC side chain and that kind of stuff. Like we don't want to scale uh, vertically too much. We want to that we 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 scale horizontally as possible. Otherwise, it's just becoming uh, very hard for people to run full nodes. So uh, that's that's part of the discussion that we're gonna have to have like uh, in the next over the next couple of weeks slash months. Uh, but definitely, we want to do. Uh, we want to scale this horizontally as much as possible. Uh, other discussions that we're gonna have to um, to to discuss between us. Uh, have to do with the, the resource allocation model right now like CPU and uh, and net like net is fundamentally broken the way I see it like it should be uh, it should be kind of redesigned to factor in the cost of storing and indexing transactions uh, like it's right now like there is there is a uh, as, as most of you are probably aware there's only a few block producers that are running the history plugin which is really not the way to go forward uh, either uh, others have been developing different solutions to kind of store the history data and everything. But it seems to me that net doesn't do much. Like it should be, uh, it should be kind of refactored in a way that uh, like 
factor in not only the bandwidth at the temporary moment, but the cost of storing the information and indexing it properly uh, for, for future retrieval. Uh, and essentially like CPU also needs some sort of uh, refactoring, maybe which Rex, uh, we can solve a, a few of these problems, but it seems to me that like the, the algorithm right now is quite naive and uh, could be improved quite a bit to, uh, to improve usability for everyone. So, but these, these discussions uh, will probably be uh, made uh, easier now with uh, referendum, to, uh, referendum tools coming up. Uh, we're gonna be able to have like stake weighted discussions on these uh, issues and potentially take uh, decisions. But these are kind of the, the lingering or like actual uh, questions that we're gonna have to debate uh, regarding performance. It's not like, it's always straight up, right? So uh, gonna have to, uh, to discuss these and see where we wanna go from them. That's basically it for the, the report. Any questions or suggestions? Did you have anything no, about um, uh, parallelization of the signature verification? It, uh, it, it is basically like uh, what, um, what Block One is kind of working on right now. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's happening at some point. For now, like it's still not there, but, but uh, it, it should, it should, like my understanding is basically like as you're replaying the chain, you could just like completely segregate in a separate queue, separate like core, uh, all the signature validation because it don't impact the state. So you can just run a uh, verification of the state changes in one of the, in one of the queues and have like signature validations done uh, separately and just then combine the outputs. So like you could, could get like a sizable performance increase uh, for uh, replaying. Uh, but it's, uh, it's, it's, it's in the works. Isn't that, isn't that a live improvement, not just a replay? Because replays, you just disable signatures for some time. But on live, uh, maybe. you want to have parallels. Yeah, like, yeah. I, uh, like, yeah. like they, they didn't release much information about it. Like, <laughs> it's, uh, it's kind of a, uh, they're yeah, like keeping it quiet. But live. Yeah, I, uh, maybe, maybe live, yeah. I, I, I thought like maybe it would uh, help for uh, replays, but uh, maybe you're right. Yeah, but but Guillaume, I mean, for now, uh, for the current situation, we can. What can we do is increase maybe a little more on the the targets, or and also uh, make uh, net costs a little more more expensive since we are not running EOS to 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 be a file storage solution, and right. um, net shouldn't be as as cheap as as it is right now. I agree. And I think that could help a little bit, and and uh, parallel to that. Upgrade the system contract to 1.40 will be helpful to at least get the optimizations on, on Clang and yeah, and then you see like this is this is the lowest hanging fruit right now. Like we're compiling system contracts and every every DAP developer like uh, should take advantage of that. Like the uh, the ESI OCDT 1.3 yeah. uh, just compiles like uh, better. So like it's uh, yeah uh, everyone right now is struggling with CPU cost uh, for their DAPs. Could just uh, and, and maybe if we get just your uh, bad dice to to upgrade his contract will be will be a yeah. twenty percent improvement. <laughs> in, in the yeah, they're supposed to uh, to open source it this month. Like uh, they said, like in uh, November they would open open source. So maybe uh, if they do, like people can uh, take a look and suggest improvements. That just means we've got hundred dice apps, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, but but a single yeah. one is responsible for yeah. like eighty percent of everything. Pretty much. Like yeah, like they, uh, they, they they're playing by the rules. Like they're staking millions of EOS and like uh, using them all. So this <laughs> that's fine. But I mean, like yeah, like they're they're big, they're huge. Any news on IBC? So you you talking about one? Have they moved on that front or not? Like there is a uh, there is guys from uh, Interblock uh, here in Montreal. Uh, you've met them, no? The code chain. Right. Coaching, yeah, they're going to release Coaching something. Too. But uh, there's a company here in Montreal called Interblockchain, and I think they, uh, they're working on the Warbly uh, EOS um, uh, Interblockchain. And uh, like, uh, I, think, I think Alex, you know them, like uh, it's uh, Jean-François Jobidon and Didier Martin and these guys. Okay. So uh, I met with them like uh, last week and it's, it's, it's very interesting what they've got. They, uh, they probably will be, uh, will have something like in the next, I'd say like probably days or weeks because they were already kind of starting the testing phase. And um, like I reviewed their uh, their code and model and uh, everything checks out. Is that open source? Because they're, they're doing it. Like to put something yeah, on. Yeah, it's uh, most open source. Yeah, okay. 
And then can you send yeah, links? I'll, uh, I'll send you. A, I'll, I'll put some links in the mainnet channel so uh, you guys can uh, can have a look. But they they're pretty uh, pretty pretty far ahead. Awesome. All right. Uh, if there's nothing more on that point, then I guess we have Mr. Yates in the room. So point number one, uh, Michael, do you want to give an update on the, the BP scheduling and, and routing that you were doing? Um, there's no update really. We've been discussing this, well, since launch really, that uh, everything's in the wrong order. So we're bouncing back between China and Europe and then off to America. So um, I just wrote a quick patch, which I think we should probably test on uh, Jungle or, sorry, not Jungle, on Kylin. Probably is better uh, to test. Um, all it does is reorder the producers by a location, which you specify, which uh, is on a list. Uh, each region has a different code. Um, Eagle, do you have it? We've all I seen do. it. Yes, yes, yes. We've all seen it where you have a different region for each um, continent, really. Um, so I don't know. There's not much more to say other than we should probably deploy it. Test it and it worked. Go with it. Yeah, yeah we need yeah, a, we few, need a few a few BPs to try to game the system. A, if you're looking for a way to to test that in different latency <laughs> configurations, I, I have a I have a test net set up which allows me to inject uh, latency into to, like put spin up single one nodes and put different amounts of latency on, on each one and different kind of uh, you know pack packet shaping methods on each one. I think the challenge is going to be to find out what numbers goes after which numbers. So we need to sort of find a route worldwide, according to the real like underseas cables or whatever, where the numbers are going to be following each other in an optimal route. So yeah. Igor, you have some... I I have yeah, we, I did a roof estimate with Eric a long time ago. And right. then we created, a, we deployed several machines around the world and tested uh, latency between them. And we came up with a, a roughly est, uh, optimized route that could be used in the first scenario. And then within we those, did. those larger regions, we can just uh, position the, the, the <laughs> for smaller regions. I don't know. But the only danger I see here is that it can be gamed quite simply by modify each BP can modify their own their own number, of course. And what was that? Was the risk that you change position in the next round, right? In the next sec schedule, you can make your, you can make yourself look better. Uh, yeah, I can make the the one behind me to to miss blocks. Yeah, but, no, but I, but I mean this... uh, that would be pretty obvious in public if some BP does this. So it's yeah. not something you would go explicitly to a place where you have high latency with the other guy before. You can modify. no, it. then I, I modify my my block delivery time and then. The, the guy behind me missed blocks. That's pretty much what happens now, though. It is. Organically. Yeah. Just that some people internet. could make their own look better if they wanted to. Yeah, I think it's a... Uh... But, it, I mean, it, it would be, be better, better than we have. If, if someone is, is on the wrong location. Yeah. <laughs> right. But if everyone looks better, it's all good, right? So if everyone works at looking better, I'm fine with that. <laughs> well, it's going to help the micro forks between uh, far away producers. Uh, that's all that's yeah. Be. And, and maybe using this, we can also increase the, the CPU more safely because it's, it's the limitation now. It's getting the blocks too big and not having time to deliver it. So. So it's a network issue, not a CPU issue, really. Yeah, it's a network issue because we can increase the CPU usage, but the network is not coping up with that. The handoffs is where it breaks, right? Because it's too yeah. long. Hand off the next block. <laughs> I had an idea of to push out to, so to to craft that route. Maybe it could be algorithmic, and we could each publish an IP address that is representative of where our our BP is. Right now, some load balancers are in front. I know Google uses Anycast, so if you do pings, it might not be hitting the proper location for the block producer. But if we publish an IP that's near, it doesn't be, even be the, the block producer, we could each ping each other and create a route and create like where I should be in that route. Maybe that would help and actually come up with the right number in the roundabout. Everybody has to agree. 
Um, all, all the block producers have to agree on the ordering, and if, if they don't, then it, it wouldn't it wouldn't hand over. I think if we start by just going by continent, we're going to make something that's a lot better than we have right now. Right. Um, there's a by the way, like. A, um, as part of our infrastructure, um, in Yas Titan, our, our partner that's providing our infrastructure is a member of the ARIN and RIPE NCC uh, regional uh, internet registries. And uh, basically, like these are uh, essentially connected with, with VGP protocol, uh, VGP, like uh, border gateway protocol, uh, like uh, which are essentially networks between ISPs. And they can uh, like rearrange their routes in a dynamic way at the at the protocol level so like i'm it's, it's kind of like a maybe longer term type of improvement but we could potentially like sit down with uh other block producers and other uh, other continents and like uh, have a few of them becoming members there and like uh try to kind of like rearrange literally like the routes of internet to kind of uh favor like uh EOS traffic so that's kind of a bit out there but it's doable like you know like there's <laughs> but if it's not algorithmic and the schedule changes, we need to sit at the table again? No, no, it needs to be some... Well, no, it can, be, it can be dynamic. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, basically, like, you, uh, like at, at that level, you have certain leeways in how you organize your routing tables at the, at the you know, like, really at the great core level. Together. It's going from one producer to their nodes to the other nodes. Right. The producer. So right. Your producers could be literally next door to each other, but yet the route between them could be global. So... Right. Uh, I don't think we're going to be able to have something which is algorithmic that we can work out exactly between each one. We have to just be very vague about it and then maybe tweak it. If you're, if you happen to be in the wrong region, even though you're actually physically in that region, but network, you're probably more likely in another region, then you can change the region yourself to be in the next one. Um, but I don't think we're going to be able to do anything which is, is very intelligent. It's just going to be, Better than alphabetical. Which, yeah, let's start this way. It's going to be safer. It's probably the worst thing that we could do. So, does it use the location field uh, with reg producer? Yeah, that's the one. Okay. And I think actually it's going to be backwards compatible as well. If somebody doesn't update their uh, location from what they have now, then they're going to be put into a zone which doesn't exist. So, they're basically going to be shoved to the end of the list. Um, and it's going to be probably the same as what we have now. So um, I think backwards compatibility is fine as well. Okay, good. Cool. Next point then. Um, so let's skip number two. Uh, ben isn't here yet. Uh, so number four, Igor, or ECAF, implementing the um yeah that that's basically the way we should go because i i, I missed the 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 test that they did uh showing that it's possible to update the the keys without uh removing the blacklist entry so we basically need to to talk about the way we we want to proceed uh into changing the 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 keys from the blacklist accounts and finally removing them from the uh, subjective blacklist to just something on chain. Um, and and if if you we want we want you to stake the accounts again as someone suggested, but it's more like a governance discussion than than a technical discussion. <laughs> Um, I checked with them and they said we can do whatever we feel is necessary. Yeah. My, 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 my opinion would be to, to change, to request, uh, to have to request the, the new keys from the, the affected parties and they, after they, they give them the, the new public keys, we, we update directly. Um, we haven't been told to update any keys to valid keys yet. We've just been told to block it. So if, so if, just, for, if just for blocking, we shouldn't even stake again, I don't know. Well, they said, like I said, they said we can do what we want. And I think staking is probably prudent, just in case, because we're still on the blacklist now. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, well, we but if you, if, you, if you 
empty the keys, if you knew out the keys, um, it's the same. It's the same. So nobody will be able to do anything. But he gives us a safety net when they do, when we do apply the change for new keys. But maybe we can push that when we do apply the change for new keys once we're with null keys, right? Mm. But I have a question. Your if said, the account was hacked, and the idea is to return it to the state that it was before it was hacked. Yeah, it's only to how it works. Yeah, okay. well, that would have its order details in the order there. Please restate da da right? Yeah, I queried them about this, and they said, they said, do do whatever you feel is right. Right, yeah. but but there are no details in the orders, right? Yeah. The order yeah. is just to to blacklist to block transactions. Igor, uh, right now you said there's an issue with when it's in the blacklist, we cannot null its keys because it it's the same issue, the same. No, no, I, I was I was thinking that, but somebody tested and and okay. it. it it works, it yeah. works. Yeah, we, we, have have we, have we, have we can know the keys. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So then we just prepare a list of accounts and null keys and then push that on chain. Yeah. Is there any objection to that? Well, uh, maybe the reverse then. Is everyone okay with that? Yeah. Let the uh, yeah. multisig show. Let the multisig show. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that can be crafted pretty quickly. Right? In one swift, one big uh, multisig. Actually, there's a proposal going on on Kylie right now to do a uh, restake. Uh, using wrap, it's probably uh, three or four more approvals to go. So we'll see the test result. Do we propose we yeah. restake, or we simply null the keys and then remove the subjective blacklist? Uh, I think I think should be two steps. One proposal to null all the keys from the blacklist, and another proposal to stake. Because if somebody wants to stake one account and not the others, yes. this makes sense. <laughs> I agree. And we should get, we should give like a, a big a big time for those like one week, just because it's a sensitive matter and people will take time to to decide. Have you checked if we can restake if the keys are null? Oh, uh, oh. tested. No, 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 no. I don't test. Uh, you test. You test. Why not? No, no, we haven't tested. The, the, but the test you are doing for stake, for staking now uses a, a existing key, right? The account yes. has an existing key. Okay. Yes. Yes. Because because Did I you think it, you don't need keys. Yeah. But it doesn't check. It doesn't check if there is any account linked to what's what's on the permission because you. No. Once the checks are done, they're done. It passes, and then require auth passes and then the delegation of bandwidth will happen just normally. Yeah, in theory, but we haven't tested that. Right, okay. Just to make sure. Yeah, you're right, in theory, it, it should work. Um, but we should test these things, otherwise we'll... Right. Okay, that's okay. it. That. I think that's it. So. Just up to someone to, to make the proposal. I can work on that if you want, but I, I would I would suggest that that before this uh, on Kyling somebody tested the, the staking with a nullet key just for us to be sure if if the, the mainnet proposals are accepted in in the different order. If people decided to stake again but not to null the keys, we we can do on the different order as well. And perhaps we want to test if we can, after having nulled keys, putting new keys in and unstaking, because that might be what's going to happen, right? When an order comes in to sort of free an account back to its owner, we would stake just so that in case they have been stolen again, I don't know what, three days for. Mm -hmm. But you mean unstaking like yeah. normally, not with the motor stake? If we want to test, we can test a few of those cases. But it's just my opinion that I think we're going to have that later when we put 
valid keys in, maybe on the same transaction, we also stake back, right? Okay. One by one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so who's gonna lead that up and, and then report back? Would that be you, Igor, or Zhao, you will do that? Just to recommend that maybe we should do that per order. So we actually split them into multiple. Do you mean doing like 17 uh, motor sigs? 16. One was missing, 16. right? And one was removing, so 15. Oh. Oh. I don't Maybe. know. <laughs> or, or one big one. I put it in one big one. At EOS Canada, we have a process of multi-sig for our own EOS Canada account. So it's going to be a lot of work, but I mean, we can do it. It's just that. You can have 17, but also with a shell script that just batches them all. Maybe because right now, like how Shintai kind of does it, you kind of batch multiple proposals. So you can have multiple MSIGs, but all in one chunk. So it's all a, one, uh, one fire, but all but separate. Also I put all the actions in one transaction and multi-sig that. It's up to you. It's, it's up to whoever proposes it. How about that? About that. Of course. <laughs> but but I mean, important. someone on the call is, is against uh, nulling the keys from one, one specific order. I don't think that this is the case. If, if that happened, people wouldn't apply the blacklist. I don't know. Everyone didn't, right? Well, I mean, it's uh, like uh, it's kind of a loaded question, but like we don't support nulling the keys to uh, through multi-sig proposals. Like that's our, our position. Uh, like the, the the issue that we see with this is we have like ECAF that is self-appointed and unelected, and through this they can censor six up to six blood producers that have been elected so I mean like it is it is like technically like there's nothing wrong with it it works and everything it's been demonstrated that 15 out of 21 blood producers can actually go ahead and like uh, pretty much do what they want however it's important to consider the precedent that it also sets when we start uh, doing things of the sort we are actually going against in my opinion uh, the constitution which is supposed to protect property so like it's uh, it's very very uh slippery slope uh to start being careless about this uh the last the last order that was uh, issued by uh by ecaf like, to me doesn't meet objective requirements that would uh that, that would like basically like make it okay to use, uh, esio rap for example I mean, like these are governance discussions, like on the technical side, like like I said, like we've tested it, it works, like everything's fine. But at the at the governance level, it is it is like a, a question that we need to discuss and answer. And like as you as you can see, like today, like Consensus, which is a large Ethereum like uh, like company, they just released like this this like hit piece as it was called uh, on EOS with, with with factual information that is wrong. Uh, but still, like they they make they make some compelling points about like is it really a blockchain if you're able to kind of have validator nodes like moving property around and everything i know larimer has been uh, vocally opposed to this whole notion he says that 21 out of 21, 21 is is bft like is uh, byzantine fault tolerant but anything less is not so anyway i just wanted to express that what one very uh, important thing that i think guillaume made a good point to bring up um, regardless of anybody's personal opinions about what Guillaume said, being sensitive to the climate um, within which we were to test such a function would be prudent. So understanding that this article was released today and then um, understanding that the, the sensitivity of the community and the industry to any such action like changing keys would be even higher than normal uh, would be good to consider. It may be worth delaying any sort of test um, until there is uh, a, a confident and strong thorough response released to this report either by block one or a conglomerate of block producers. I just point out though that ECAF is named in the constitution and we wouldn't be applying anything if it came from something that wasn't in the constitution. If 
Ebob comes up and says, please freeze that thing. Obviously, Obviously we wouldn't we would. oh, right? Oh, right? But ECAF wow. is in there and we slipped it at the end on launch because we wanted to have a way, it's not a perfect way, but to boot, to be able to do that governance. So I, I like, I understand the point. Uh, however, like from a legal perspective, it doesn't add up. It doesn't check out, uh, like doesn't work uh, in many ways, at least here in Canada, I've, uh, I've had it vetted by my lawyers and basically like regulators as well. And it doesn't hold up. So I'm happy to have that discussion with anyone who wants to learn more. Uh, but like, as far as I'm concerned, as Yas Titan is concerned and other actors that we uh, discussed with, uh, we're, we're not in uh, on, on very solid, uh, legal footings. So uh, I, I, I would still recommend like to be very, very cautious about this whole thing. So what so, are the next the steps here then? I think, I think like, uh, again, like this is kind of a technical call, so it's not really the the purpose here but just to uh, to address this i think i think it should be at least uh like voluntarily uh, on a voluntarily basis uh blood producers should come together and kind of establish standards uh regarding what is uh you know like a transaction that they could censor or what is a case uh that they would unanimously type of uh, of thing apply uh, a freeze uh, things of the sort. I think we should also uh, add this kind of concept where uh, blood producers need to respond to an ECAF order, whether they say like we accept or we refuse, uh, that would also help a lot because obviously like if, if, if everyone accepts and a few people just don't, don't, don't respond, it's, it's a different story than if uh, you get 15% that say yes and like six that say no. It's a, it's a very, very different uh, like story from a, a legitimacy perspective. You know, like a multi-sig does not cover the, the, the down vote or the, the nose. Right, right. We could use, we could try to, so I suggest one thing. There's, well, there's an initiative called EOS Enhancement Proposals where we can standardize, it's a sort of standardization body. You remember like Python's PEP, standards, Bitcoin's BIP, RFCs, and you know, there's a long history. And uh, the Ethereum repository for EIPs was forked and, and, and cleaned up so that we could have those documents that define standards. And we could in there specify and, and work together to define like in which contract is a decent Twitter that block producers would send a yes and that would be considered by all. And then we would discuss it. And at some point we enact, right? We, we try that. So I suggest we put that proposal in a proposal enhancement and then we Circulate it. Yeah, I agree. Sounds reasonable. So EEPS.io today. So. Perfect. So who will run point on that? <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> no volunteer. So running point on what? On the proposal, running point on the fact that we should vote before um, um, just enacting a, an ECAP proposal where we at least send our opinion because right now everyone is on a twelve twenty one 21 did block the blacklist, right? If they no. didn't, they would let things slip through. So there's sort of an all or nothing. Didn't want right. to actually do slip through. A few of them slipped through like in the past, like I think four. Yeah. So at least the multi-sig allows you to say no. And, but this majority of 15 plus one, uh, two thirds plus one will still you know, decide, which is more respectful of DPoS, I think. Okay. So let's postpone that, I guess. All righty. Uh I mean, I think, I think, I think, like, uh, yes, we uh, we should do like Alex said, like, kind of like start working on a, on some proposal to um, to maybe like uh, just give some sort of frame of reference and like uh, you know, like if if we're gonna be a, a governed blockchain, we have to take into account like traditional uh, traditions and law, like jurisprudence and this kind of thing, and uh, we should we should have like um, you know, like a, a conscious and and like like you know, I guess, a uh, prudent uh, way to address these new precedents. Like this, this new blacklist that was uh, ordered, that was uh, issued yesterday is different from all the other ones. Uh, like in the sense, it's not like key theft or things of the sort. It's the first one that actually challenges, at least as, as far as I know, it's the first one that challenges 
like uh, the, the nature of the smart contract itself, like saying like it didn't behave like it should. It's like the DAO uh, like uh, hack on Ethereum. And bear in mind, like the DAO hack on Ethereum was resolved by a hard fork, but uh, like also created like Ethereum Classic out of it. So like this is the kind of, uh, of like contentious type of, uh, of action that may lead to, uh, you know, like a loss of consensus in the whole, uh, whole thing. So it's very important to kind of recognize it as such and to, uh, and to establish a proper precedent, you know? If you want to do that, it's not for us to, de to decide the merit of any case. It, it, just, it just isn't our job. I understand that we are the only accountable entity. The block producer is the only accountable entity in the ecosystem. If you want to do that, just move for a vote of no confidence in ECAF and let's just have a coup and get it over with. Because it, 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 that's the direction that we're going to slowly be going. And is it even worth expending all of the energy to do that when we're going to be moving into this brave new world of referendum where ECAF may or may not even exist and we can save ourselves a whole lot of bullshit? I agree, but uh, still, like there is, there is like a precedent that will be set if we if we act right now on like in the current state. And I agree, it's not perfect, and like constitution like uh, has many flaws. And hopefully, with referendum, we can move forward and establish like a better better grounds to move forward. Uh, this being said, like I'm very very uh, like uh, sensitive to how uh, these type of things could be perceived and notwithstanding like the current state of things and whatnot, like there is like blood producers are the ones that enforce these type of things. Uh, they are elected. They are uh, like the, the only bodies that have been elected. So they do have until like proper uh, like procedures are established, they do have uh, a role of importance and it has to be recognized. But I agree, I agree. With, with most of what you're saying. And, and I agree that it would be wise to delay testing uh, or doing a, a changing keys or moving pro tokens. Doing that right now, the day that this report comes out, would probably be stupid to, of us to do. That's my opinion. I don't think we should be doing anything like that. We can, could, I think we should be continuing with the blacklist as broken as it is the alternative could break much more. A hundred percent. I agree as well. That's Yas Nation's position as well. The political landscape right now with that article coming out, uh, the way that it was written, um, the impact that it has potentially, if you go ahead and you do um, use multi-sig right now instead of blacklists, as much as blacklist is broken, could have uh, very, very high risk repercussions versus uh, the repercussions of failing to do a blacklist properly again. And it's it, it really is a matter also of uh, like timing for the the whole sequence of events. You know, like after referendum is in place, after we can like actually get uh, token holders' opinions on some of these issues and like uh, kind of get some sort of a uh, an indication of what is supported by 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 token holders, we can act much more confidently in these type of things. But I mean, as of now, as of now, like this legitimacy has not in our book been established and like it's very, very shaky. The goal of, a, of, of our platform here is to establish a strong consensus between its users. So like the more uh, we are, uh, we, we, we kind of think these things, uh, these things true and the more we uh, make sure that everyone kind of get a, a say in the whole process, the more uh, resilient our consensus is going to be. So, I mean, like, we, we should not try to go and, uh, like, cut in the middle of everything that we see. We want to we wanna make sure that we set the boundaries right of what is uh, allowed and what is uh, expected. And this is how we, we achieve a stronger consensus, That's not by being uh, careless. I, I agree we should go up with the referendum as soon as possible because in the end if EOS is to be a governed blockchain in a certain way then we'll want to show our colors at some point maybe the colors is going to be to to null the keys if that's the token holders opinion because we'll mean this network is a network of people that together want this right they want it this way so maybe having a, some input from community will be very useful right now where the elected bodies is true but uh, it wouldn't be you couldn't oppose that if token holders give their opinion right You'll say right. it's their community, they handle it how they want. Agreed 100%. Eric, you're laughing, man. What's up?
there's a couple that are laughing. There's Michael as well that's uh, laughing quite hard over there. They're sharing memes. All right. So whilst everyone's laughing, let's give Igor uh, the, the last point that slipped in, um, just where, as I mentioned before, some of you joined, uh, Kevin Wilcox raised the issue about um, CPU saturation. Again, we've seen a lot of people turning to CPU emergency and bank of stake. Um, so Igor, you have um, some ideas for a fix. I don't I think you touched a little bit on this in point number three, but. Um, yeah, my point now would be we should proceed with the upgrade to 1.4.0 on the system contracts. And as soon as this is done and we, we get some stable, stabilized results on the CPU after this, we can think if we should increase the uh, target block limits to maybe 25 or 30 percent if the network allows us. And in the meanwhile, we, we should test uh, Michael's proposal, which, which can help the networking part. And as, as if the networking part is lightened up, we can increase the CPU. That's my, my position. Okay, perfect. So we just wait and hear from you guys once you've done your test. Thanks. Yeah. So if if no one's here is against the 1.40 version, uh, I could go forward and, and make a proposal for upgrading. Don't wait, put the proposal in. Okay. People will start uh, digging, I guess. Is that yeah. for main, Igor? Yeah, and for you main. Want one four one, not one four zero. No, no, no. It's one four zero. The system contracts, not the no deals version. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And it's uh, been which, which is yeah, it has been tested. I have been used in in two different test nets mm -hmm. personally, and Kyling is upgraded to that, right? So it's it's pretty much safe um, to go. I think. I have a slight I'm not sure about the uh, <clears throat> the contract on Kyling. What? It's uh, still 1.2.1. Oh, it's not upgraded in Kylie. Okay, so we should do first some Kylie, yeah. but yeah. We, also, we, yeah. Have, we have a breaking change with the MSIG uh, contract. So I don't know how we alert the developers that we're about to break everything. Oh, yeah, um, but it, it has to happen some. some... Can but, you summarize the breaking change? Uh, they changed the table for the uh, approvals. It's gone from approvals to approvals two, and now it includes the date and time that they approved. Each person approved is, is logging the date and time now. Time now. Okay. So if but, you're, you're using a front end tool which shows approvals, it's gonna break. So the so block explorer, for example. So it's backwards yeah, it's, compatible it's, though. No. No, well, I mean, I mean it's not breaking. Is, it's not going to break anything, but you but won't. It's just a display, so it will break, break the displays, and people have to fix that. But I mean, it's not unless somebody unless somebody is doing this inside of a smart contract. But I'm, I don't believe they are because checking approvals inside of us, I don't know. It's yeah, it doesn't sound like something you would do, but they could be, they could be. But it's going to just show no approvals. It's not going to break as such. It's just it will always show that no approvals have been made. So yeah, we just need to maybe even start thinking about how we tell people going forward that there are breaking changes, because we're probably going to have some more come up at some point. Yes. Sounds like we need a proposal, Michael. <laughs> proposal, how we... Um... But I, I see that they kept the they kept the old table. They are just they are just uh, saving the data to the new one, right? Yeah. They kept access to the old one. So if you had an old proposal, it it will still be there. Yeah, I don't know how do they. Do it they, upgrade? I know it they just still they, the they created a new one and and now they add the the data to the new one, but the old one is still there. So if if you're yeah, querying a proposal before the, the the upgrade, it's fine. Yeah, so if you if you half agreed it before the change and then the final agreement so we're after, is it gonna break? Yeah, that's a good test. So we should <laughs> yeah, that, that's a good test. We should create a proposal and then upgrade the contract and try to execute that and 
maybe continue approving something like this. Yeah, I'm not sure they migrate the approvals over. Um, I have to check. All right, cool. Then is there anybody for anything else? Or we'll uh, wrap it up there. Has anyone Is that, or ch tested the uh, um, impact of the... Just quickly, Michael, it does. Uh, it, it checks on the old, uh, old approval table if it's not on the new approval table when you do approve. Okay. So it's, it's backward compatible for approvals, but not for redo them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so it's not so bad, but it is something that we need to think about in the future because we're probably going to get other breaking changes. They love just reading. So, so somebody could prepare like a, a proper text to publish jointly to the, to the developer community. And then after that is published, just alerting them that the upgrade will be made, we can go ahead. I don't know. Yeah. So Is one thing tested? I want to talk yeah. about. Go ahead. Sorry. Okay. So one thing I want to talk about is uh, um, I I send out a, a feedback form to a bunch of uh, DApp developers who have launched um, live DApps that's built on EOS uh, to ask them to give some feedback on the developer experience. And we have uh, a dozen of them fill out the form, and I already compiled it. Uh, it's sent to the group. I'll also send it one more time. Um, a lot of them is about documentation. So I think a, um, a lot of feedback is addressing to block one. Uh, there are a few points addressing to block producers that we can help. Um, uh, most of them is to block one. So I'm just gonna post it again. Hope everybody will read it. I'll also forward it to um, Bart because he seemed to be interested in reading about uh, how's the adoption of DAP developers? Okay, that's awesome to think. Looking forward to reading that. Which ones are directed at us? Could you highlight which we should be looking at rather than B1? Uh, well, I think, uh, I think it's just the API one. Let's see, too few public nodes with history support. Um, but I mean, some of them we can help with education, um, but I think most of it is to block one. You know, documentation and better release process, um, you know, update the documentation before releasing the code and, 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 and you know, block producers pushing out those updates and uh, uh, like roadmaps from B1. I think most of them is for B1. Hmm. I see that they say oh. table. Table schema upgrade is impossible, but that's not true. It's just not straightforward. Yeah, I guess there's some Table things that we need to educate better, hmm. or documentation could be done better. Yeah, so these are people who have actually launched dApps uh, on EOS. So I think these are very valuable feedback from them. Hmm. Great initiative, thanks for doing that. And if you know, if you know that there are others uh, who have launched dApps and want to you know, try to get some feedback from them, uh, here is the link. Super. I guess, Daphne, could you post that into the uh, Telegram as well? I don't know how... Uh, yeah, I did. After. Awesome. I did. Uh, it's at the EOS main at BP room. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Is there anything from anybody else? Otherwise, we can uh, shut this down within the hour. Yeah, if, if I may. Um, for next week, I see there's a number five uh, point on the Constitution referendum. So today I'll be announcing um, just updates on the, the vote tally. If anyone in this room wants to help out, kind of just proof check the results of the vote tally. I think Roshan and maybe Alex or whoever 
Um, I'll be putting out a report and I have essentially vote tallies based on block numbers. So let's say if you say I voted on this block number and then I change my vote at this block number, we can replay the, the vote counts based on block numbers. So if you give me some scenarios like I voted with my proxy and then I unstaked and then I revoted and the number should be this, I can actually go back in time at a specific block number and we can replay. I can give you the result of the tally based on a specific block number. And that way you can kind of do your own test case uh, yourself. So if anyone wants to test that, just ping me or ping the referendum channel. And then hopefully by next week, we should be out of beta, but today we should um, be doing a lot of testing on that. So if anyone can help me out, Alex, I think Roshan, and I think Syed also um, will be helping. So all the help you can come by and just ping me and uh, wait out for an update for me. Great work there. Oh. Very cool. All right. Um, well, then let's leave it there. So have a great morning, afternoon, evening, night, wherever you guys are. Uh, Thanks, everyone. Speak to you next week. See you later. Bye, bye. 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 Bye